Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Hi. Welcome to our show today in this episode. Jill and I talk about how to value land. That seems pretty obvious. Yeah, you'd think. <laughs> I'll sure I'll be try. I'll try to make it complicated though. That's for oh, sure. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the LandInvestors.com online community. It's free. Okay, Matt asks, "Hi everyone, I'm starting to close my deals in house, and I'd like to make sure that the way I accept payment is as current as possible. I'm up to date on the podcast." and the Thursday afternoon weekly member calls. I can't tell you how many different things I've heard, ha ha. Payment systems seem to come and go. One week it sounds like a company allows real estate, the next they don't, and so on. I know that Jack and Jill are working on, working to solve this for us, much appreciated, but what is the current state of the art? If you were setting up your payment system for selling properties today, how would you approach it? In parentheses, I haven't set up my land pin account yet, but I will be doing so soon parentheses what do you think jack well, what is you know yeah this is a very very valid uh concern and it's a big issue so here's the deal in around 2004 to 2010 everybody's happily going along collecting payments for properties uh in the purchase and sale and the actually like payments to make payments to pay off the property with paypal they woke up one day around i don't know 2010 and said we do not, we, it's beyond our risk threshold and they tur- cut us all off, all of us. They didn't yeah. give us any notice. We were all happily sailing along. So we all scrambled <laughs> and, and found something else. I think it was Stripe at the time or, or Blue Pay or there's a bunch of them. There's a million payment, they're called payment gateways. And all of them, for whatever reason, I've one all agreed. One. <laughs> all agreed. It's not the same time, too. It's funny. It's, it's like, like one dominoes. by one. They go, we're all over here. We're all happily accepting payments. And the next thing they go, no, we changed our mind. And then we go to the next guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like domino. So yeah. there, you have exactly two solutions. And one of them is not out. Uh, Jill Pay is, is one of them. And it's we're working extremely hard to get this thing done. The second one, and a couple of our members have done this very successfully. In fact, we've done it, too is to go to your bank and sit down with the uh, the branch manager or whoever is the most appropriate or highest person you can get to. Um, try to make it a large branch and explain the situation. And they will, <clears throat> if, especially if you have had a bunch of uh, deposits over time and they're looking at your bank account and your deposits over the last few years, they'll, they will grant you permission to do this. Um, and they'll kind of say, they don't issue a waiver, but what they really do is say, look, you seem to be a stand-up person on this whole thing. We're going to let you do this. And so several members have had success with that. It's it's not an overnight process, um, which is why Jill and I are really trying to solve. Mm-hmm. We are solving this with with, Bill, with uh, Jill Pay. Mm-hmm. And it, it all comes down to the back-end um, processor. Uh, it's, it's, if you look in on the Internet and find out how credit cards are processed and how many people are involved when you, when you buy something on Amazon, it's actually relatively silly. The real winners like are more involved than they realize exactly. <laughs> yeah. What do the banks issue? Do they let them do? They give them something that lets them be like a, like the payment gateway kind of thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Specifically, Bank of America is known to do this, and that's who, who we use right now. So, but, you know, if you're brand new and you've got thirty cents in your bank account, it's probably not going to work. Right. I'm just being real real straight about it. Well, you know, and and let's just be honest. Worst case scenario, can you? Can people wire you money? Yes. Can people send you checks and do payments like that? Yes. Um, there's, there's, you can get around it if you have to. I mean, I remember in the old days, seriously, you know, um, people would send checks or money orders or cashier's checks, and I would tell them, I will mail the deed, you know, like, especially mm-hmm. if it's a personal check, that's all they had. I'd say, all right, when the check clears, I've, I received your check. I deposited, here's a screenshot, whatever, you know, and then it's supposed to clear in three days, and when it clears, I'll send you the deed, and they understand, and it's okay. That's a great point, Jill. You can take ACH payments all day long mm-hmm. online. Exactly. So that's a very valid, uh, I don't know why we don't do that more often. In fact, I'm going to look into that. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, don't be afraid. I, I mean, we, when someone's, especially with the larger transactions, I mean, when we've had real, real large transactions, I don't want to run them through the credit card because I don't want to pay it's that expensive. much percentage yeah, exactly. on, the, on the transaction. So I would much prefer that someone, it's $50,000, why don't you just wire it to me and here's my bank information. Do I worry about security with that? Have I had any issues with doing it that way? No. I haven't. No, and there has to be some trust too. So I've given that speech over the years several times. Um, you have to trust, there has to be a little bit of trust and you have to show some history on the internet that you're actually here to stay. Right. It's just called common sense stuff. Mm -hmm. If you have a question or you want to be on the show, reach out to either one of us on landinvestors.com. Today's topic, how to value land. This is the meat of the show. So this would fall under the top, the category of Captain Obvious here. But... I, this, the topic came up because I got in like a light debate with uh, somebody who's not even a member on landinvestors.com about this topic. And, <laughs> That's and, hilarious. And here's what happened. I missed this. Is it there for all of us to go see? In case, if, you're, uh, if you're brand new to this, uh, <laughs> if you're brand new to the show, Jill and I, uh, our hobby, well, now it's become our career, is to dispel the, the, yes. the myths of regular real estate. It's yes. all, it, regular real estate is bought and sold like it's 1953. Totally. And how you value real estate is still straight out of 1953, in my opinion. Maybe I'm going to show up in a gold jacket. We should have like a photo of us with the gold jackets. Like, really? <laughs> People are obsessed in this industry across uh -huh. the board from, from skyscrapers all the way down to rural vacant land. Obsessed with completed sales. And I have to argue that because while comp completed sales are valid, they are there's they are absolutely valid it's so it, it, the more you the more you dig into completed sale on any given uh, deal the more you're going to find errors so if you there's only about two places you can get comp good completed sale data number one the mls slash zillow slash trulia and that's only as good as how the real estate agent inputs it if they ding, input ding, it. if they do it at all exactly because they already got their commission check they're not much very they're not really going to follow up on else. the paperwork they're going to put market sold <laughs> take the sign down and move on yeah number two is assessor data same thing it's only as good as the assessor puts it uh inputs the data so and what happens with assessor data in our line of business with this asset type very 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 often deals are completed in what's called multi-unit transactions. So not we just didn't buy one property, we bought 50 or two or 10. And that, those, <laughs> that uh, gross amount of that purchase price or sale, the sale amount gets mm -hmm. input and associated with every single one of those APNs. So it really skews the data fast. That's true. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Uh -huh. So completed sales, while they are valid, are not the end all. Here's the end all. What's your property worth? How do you value what your property's worth? You pro you, it's very simple. You, it, it's the value that someone's willing to pay for it. It's true. Well, let's look at what people are willing to pay. And it's it's right in the in your face. It's right in front of you. You know, it's funny. Like, how many, how many, I know this still happens. We all know this happens. You're buying a house. You, you make an offer of... I don't know, four hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars, right? So then the guy comes out for the appraisal. By golly, he appraises it at four hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars. How can that be? Gee, how did that happen? <laughs> huh? Let's all think about this. See, there you go. Off, it's the sales price that really determines what it's worth, Jack. Like that. So thank you. I think that the value of an asset like this is ex is. Looking at the other purchase price, I should say. other properties that are for sale, yeah, and making sure that you're below that, right? That's how you value a property. Here's an example: if you have a five-acre property in Mojave County, Arizona, that you you're thinking about buying, this is really where this this is why this topic is so important because you don't want to pay too much up front before you flip it, right? So what do you do? You go look at the other properties that are for sale, and then you make sure that you buy it way below. The, the lower echelon priced property so you can't get hurt on the resale. That's that's the value of your property. So if, it, if it's $20,000, you better make darn sure that you buy the thing for less than 10 mm -hmm. or less than half. In, our, in this asset value with houses, it's different. It's a little bit higher. But that's really how you value an asset. It, mm -hmm. It's not completed sales. Here's, a, here's some examples of what skews completed sales really bad. Let's say, uh, I see this all the time and it makes me nuts when I look at completed sales. 
So Jill has a company and I have a company. I have a bunch. I own a bunch of property and she owns a bunch of property. And that's just how we've done it for years and years for a lot of reasons. And we don't like pick and choose which ones we get. We just mm-hmm. do it to split it up so that for, for a lot of reasons, for a lot of liability reasons. kind of like the kids. You're in charge of that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm out. God, which one do I get? I'm out. <laughs> That'd be hard. <laughs> Come on, we all do it. You know we all do it. You're in charge so. of that one. I'll take this one on. All right, got it. You got the tough one. I'll make it. I'll do this for you. All right, that's fair. Done. Yeah, there's nothing <laughs> fair about that. You're right. It's yeah. a mess. Anyway, so a lot of times... For whatever reason, Jill needs a bunch of property to be in her name from me. So what do I do? I deed it over to her. Well, I have to assign a value to that. Guess what value we sell? Assign one dollar, mm-hmm. and that, that's a completed sale in the assessor's database. Right. That does screw things up. <laughs> <laughs> if you go looking up your thing and like, well, I guess I'm going to price it at two dollars. And I never do. For whatever reason, you never deed me or I never deed you one property. It, it's like fifty like a of them. Bunch. And now they're all fifty have one dollar. So divided by a dollar, <laughs> fifty divided by one, one dollar divided by fifty. <laughs> so you can see how it gets skewed. The right. I, I explain how to do it. Look at the property that's actually posted for sale, and and just be be uh, be lower. Be under the price. <laughs> I love it. That you know what, Jack? Thank you. That wasn't that wasn't too confusing. Oh, I, I think okay, that good. You want to throw something in there? <laughs> Just kidding. You want, you want me to throw something in to confuse it? Exactly. Just kidding. <laughs> well, all right. Here, I'll confuse it. Oh, I mean, this is why. I'll, I'll tell you what's confusing. What's really really confusing is looking at completed sales and trying to. If you sort, if you picture all the data in a spreadsheet of a whole county of data, and you have all the completed sales, and there's properties in there for a dollar, a lot of them are zero. So what does that mean? They never sold. No, they just never got input. So tons of them are in there for a dollar or five dollars or some obscure amount. And then there's, a, and these are all like kind properties. And then at the top, there's several that are like fourteen million dollars. And here's why they're fourteen million, because the assessor or the inputter added too many zeros. Yeah. That How many times happen. have you looked at the acreage of a property and sorted for it? And it said 43560. This is 43,000 acres, this property? No, it's 43560 square feet equals right. one acre. Exactly. Because the cake eaters input it wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. The I defy eaters. you to tell me I'm wrong. On I that. know you're right, but you can't. That's okay. They don't listen. <laughs> they, this? She won't, won't let me talk about the, the people that work at the county and how much cake, cake they eaters. eat. Oh my gosh. What other names do you have for people? What do you call the people at the post office? I don't have a name. For, I know I don't go oh, into a post office. Okay. What do you call the people at the bank? I don't go into the bank. What do you call the people in the grocery store? Nice. <laughs> What do you mean? I'm, I don't walk around with labels. Special. For <laughs> no, that's what I call you. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Listen. This first, is my special partner. First, you're partner, telling Jill. me I smell like bug spray this morning, and now you're telling me I'm special. Wow, are you really talk about that on yes. the air? Yes. I can't believe I sat down and Jack's like, um, "Are you worried about something? Why? You smell like bug spray. You just like douse yourself. I'm like, no, it's a lotion, but that's the last time." I use that. <laughs> I didn't mean it like it's that. It's expensive I lotion too. Thought, That's really funny. I honestly thought there's like bugs or something. Yeah, like what's going on there, babe? Smell like bug spray. <laughs> <laughs> and that's love. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's good for me, so I'm going to say this sentence. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information. That's me. You're right. And inspiration. That's me. <laughs> to get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I can't believe you. Cake ears. <laughs> <laughs> With the bug spray thing. I know. It's like, it's, it's, um, shoot, it's the Lossit, whatever, Lossitane or something like that. I never say it right but it's a fancy lotion that they have but oh well <laughs> and i have a travel size i haven't used i think i'll give that away <laughs> you know what don't take my word for it ask other people oh thank no no one's gonna say that they're not gonna go you know mosquitoes mosquitoes going around today what's going on <laughs> no <laughs> yeah i'm gonna end this while i'm just not slightly up not ahead <laughs> <laughs> information and inspiration to buy undervalued property 
We We are are Jack and Jill, and and this was the Cash Flow from from Land Show. Show. We are the experts at acquiring property of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.